Oh, hi guys! Welcome to the vlog. In today's episode, I will be doing a deck tech on Aurora. So I was able to win a 45-person pro quest with Aurora. Um, did really well. Um, it's a really good deck. Um, and I just wanted to make this quick video showing you what I ran. Um, ito yung gold foil. This is the gold foil, which is uh, Voltaire for the Lexi fans out there. So let's jump straight right into it. So we have the deck over here. Let's start with the blues. And then the power cards, and then our reds, and then our sideboard equipment, and all that good stuff. So, set it aside. For the blues, we have three current funnels. Um, really nice blue block three lightning card that you can just pitch to make an embodiment, hit with uh, Starfall, and all that good stuff. I run three Heaven's Claws instead of three Sigils or three Blinks, primarily because they just block well. Um, with Aurora, sometimes you really need to block. And having cards that block is just really good especially with blues right so this one we have there for my three other blues i just run three i have two blinks and one sigil of lightning it's one sigil of lightning because it looks nice <laughs> and then we have just two blinks so those are the nine blues in the main board so let's set those aside next we get to the power cards so these are the cards that make the deck broken or unfair you should always have that if you play decks, um, you have three Arc Lightnings, which are just super powerful, especially if you pair it with Flicker Wisp for the combo turn, or if you just want to deal damage, this can be a 0 for 4, a 0 for 5, and we have Channel Lightning Valley, uh, which is also just a busted card. I mean, paired with Sigil of Suffering or Arcane, the mixed damage, you almost always get this to hit and draw that additional card. So you, you want to keep this for as long as possible. So yeah, those are the broken cards that make Aurora fun to play. Um, for the reds, let's kick things off with the starters um, or cards that have go against. And Twine Lightning is almost always a go again for four, uh, zero for four go again. We have Conditional Go Again with Lightning Surge. Um, this one, put in the arsenal, we have Ravenous Rabble. This really gives me Briar feels because these are the cards that I used to run with Briar. Um, and Lightning Strikes, super versatile. Sometimes you just swing for seven, especially if you're against Azalean, get hit with, hit with Red in the Ledger. Um, this is an extender, so it can also be a starter. It's a conditional starter. So this is Flittering Charge. If you have Sigil of Solace or if you have any instant that you can play after it, you can start with this. Um, Burn Up Shock, which is always a good starter, or you can ping them during their turn if they don't have any cards so that you can draw off CLV. Uh, we have three sizzles. In the deck that I played during ProQuest, I had one sizzle and two fries. I had one sizzle because I had a sizzle playmat. <laughs> and I just realized playing throughout the day that I would remove fry more and keep sizzle in. So in the long run, it just made more sense to take out um, fry and just put in sizzle instead. Um, for the instance, we have three electrostatic discharge. This card is so broken paired with gone in a flash uh, or, or flittering charge. So, I mean, if you have an embodiment of lightning prior and then you play gone in flash and then you hit it with this to bounce it and it already has to go again, it's a freaking two card 11, which happened, with, which I was able to pull off several times. Really powerful card. Um, I have two sigils of solaces. I just run two lightning presses. Now, some people um, in Discord want to take out lightning presses, but I won at least two games during ProQuest off the back of this card. So I will not give this up. And it can really be a source of pain. Let's say you play Burn Up Shock, Static Shock, and then use this to make it hit. You not only get the value from Burn Up, you also get that additional one lightning value um, from Static Shock. So this is a really good card in the deck. Um, two Electromagnetic Somersault, good for defense, especially since we have Heaven's Claws. We have three Second Strikes. This is our Extender, uh, really good card. And then we get to the Power card, my favorite card. <laughs> this card is so busted, like really, really strong. I mean, this can be, let's say you have an embodiment, right? So you start with this and then you, you bounce it with, I don't know, maybe with the, um, maybe with a blink and then put it back down again if you were able to make a go again then make it hit again and again and again i mean there's one turn i remember i had greaves and then i had the blue i had this in arsenal and i think i had three instants so what i did was um attack with this go again and then use the blue to pop the greaves and then play electrostatic uh discharge bounce it 
attack for 7, so I'm already at 11 points of damage. And then I, I think I had another electrostatic discharge. Bounce it again, since it had go again because of the Greaves. Attack again for 7. And then I think the final, I, the final instant I had was Sigil of Solace, which is still 7 points of value. So this card is so insane in the deck. And that's the reason why I still prefer running Greaves over Snapdragon. Um, because primarily, it synergizes really well with Gone in a Flash, okay? Um, we have our Enders, we have Static Shock, um, really good card, especially if it hits. Um, three Arcanic Shock Waves, one Arcane, three block, zero for four, and we have our favorite four Snatches. So that's like the main board in red. Now, before I move on to the sideboard and the equipment, can I just take this quick opportunity to just request from LSS, if there is someone from LSS watching today's video, for the love of God, can you please make foil versions of these two cards. The entire deck is kind of blinged out already. Everything is in foil, except for these six cards. The, the Aesthetic Shock and Sizzle, they came from First Strike. They don't come in rainbow foil. They're just non-foil. So, I mean, James White, Brian Gottlieb, or Carol, or uh, anyone, please, for the love of God, watching from LSS, Trevor, whoever ends up watching this video from LSS, please make foil versions, uh, especially for people like me who like to bling out their stuff, right? Anyway, moving to our, what's this? We are moving to our sideboard. So let's start with the sideboard cards before we get to the equipment. Uh, so these were the two fries I was talking to you about, which I removed. So we have three Exude Confidences. Uh, works really well against decks that play instants or block uh, with Death Reacts. Of course, we're talking, looking at Enigma. Uh, one good way to play this is you start things off with an embodiment, so give it go again. You lead with this, and if they don't have anything to block to prevent the ability, then you have the entire turn free from Death Reacts and Instant. So it can be a really powerful card. Um, Flicker Wisp. Um, this one, I was actually thinking of cutting all together because it only really works if you're able to stack it properly with Arc Lightning or if you have the luxury of time to keep it in your arsenal because the damage being thrown your way is not as heavy or as bad. So I am still undecided, but I am thinking of what to do if I should keep it or not. Um, we have two Sigils of Sufferings, which is just an MVP in my book, especially against aggro matchups. And then we have three Warmongers Diplomacies. This is what allowed me to win against the three Azaleas during the PQ. Um, there was this crazy turn. Where was that? I remember I had this really crazy turn um, wherein I had that in Arsenal and I had, oh, where's, where's, the, where's the other card? Ah, oh, shocks, I'm missing it. Where's the yellow cards? Where are my yellow cards? Yellow card. Oh, it should be here. So I, I had Arc Lightning in hand. So if you read Arc Lightning, it says here, whenever um, the next action card you play this turn gets go again. So the line was Arc Lightning, I gave this go again, Warmongers, and then just said war. And then I played two Entwines, fused it with Lightnings to, kept, to keep on giving it go again. Um, and then I think I was able to play like a Lightning Surge or something at the end and then pass it to him. So it was a really crazy turn that I think any Azalea player would hate to see, right? So let's just set that aside. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's why probably I went with Fries initially more than the Sizzles because I wanted to play a deck that could make full use of Warmonger. Shout out to Sam Dando. I saw his video, uh, I think it was Battle Hard in Milwaukee. Um, where he talked about this deck, and I drew a lot of inspiration from the, the final list that I ran from him, as you guys can see. Uh, for the equipment, we have our cold foil tokens. Uh, we have, I run Crown of Dominion with air, a, either Iron Weave. If ever I need to pull off that combo, I am thinking of cutting it out completely though. Spell Freight and Shock Charmers this really for our Kano hate. I respect Kano a lot. Um, so yeah, we should have this in the deck. And then the typical armor suite, um, Dyadic, Iron Weave, Starfall, Greaves, Grass of the Arc Knight. Um, I run Balance of Justice more than COP or uh, the new Runeblade, fa the Face Purgatory thing, primarily because this just gives so much value if against Mirrors and Brutes. So I did face off a Mirror in the top 8 cut, um, and then the, he did a double CLV. Um, and fortunately, I was ahead in life. I could tank the damage and just draw a card, and then I finished it off with one arsenal card and five cards in hand. So again, this can be an MVP. Uh, and yeah, of course, Grasp of the Arc Knight, best arms for Runeblade. So yeah, generally that's the deck. Um, very happy with the overall performance. If you guys have questions on Aurora, 
comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. This probably won't be the final list that I'll be running for Worlds. There is a lot of time to tweak and tune, fine-tune the deck. Uh, and hopefully I get to play more in the next few weeks so I can do get some more testing in. So yeah, that's it for now. Um, peace!